scrunchy. Scrunch. You can all say it. Scrunchy. Scrunch. Very good. It's a very satisfying word to say. We are immediately struck by the expressiveness of the word as compared to the reticence of, say, sock, or hat, or cape, all boring words. The clues to its use are embedded in its name, its ability to expand and contract, the volume and flexibility of its bunched, rippled material, scrunch. The scrunchie is surely the most onomatopoeic of all hair accessories, indeed of all articles of dress, with the obvious exception of flip-flop. <laughs> Linguistically, scrunchly is a uniquely American word that evokes a sort of homey familiarity, um, like sandwich or lunch, as well as an undercurrent of economic instability. For example, credit crunch, struggle, scrounge. <laughs> if we do a quick word association, we think of scram. Screen, scrape, screwball, and scrotum. We think of fun, sun, run, bunch, punch, munch. And if we take the French E sound at the end, we could come up with other words like chewy, booty, stinky. The word combines forceful physicality with juvenile humor. Just in the state of suspended adolescence, scrunchy hints finally at comfort, wrist, and bourgeois convention. In a word, vulgarity. This interpretation is reinforced when we consider the origins of the scrunchy. For the scrunchy was always intended for a mass audience. Now, who invented the scrunchy? The answer is Rami Rebson, seen here on the right. <laughs> the first patent documents for the scrunchie were filed on December 11, 1986, and approved the following year in September 1987. <laughs> the abstract describes this invention in typically arcane language. A decorative ponytail holder for securely holding the hair of a user includes a band of elastic material with fabric surrounding the band, conforming a plurality of radial projections extending circumferentially around a portion of the band. Accompanying drawings show the scrunchie by itself, securing a ponytail in figure one, on figure two worn on the wrist, already hinting at the versatility of this <laughs> as yet unnamed hair accessory. But who was Rami Rebson? According to the New York Observer, she was a singer-songwriter who at one point had a contract with Motown Records. One day, as she was house-sitting in Long Island, recuperating from a bitter divorce, she devised a fabric-covered elastic that could hold back her brittle, over-processed hair without damaging <laughs> This simple invention, which she named Scunchy, after her pet poodle, went on to make an estimated $100 million a year in U.S. sales. The Scunchy became a fixture in malls and accessory boutiques across the country, as well as on the arms and ponytails of teenage girls. It appeared in magazines, sitcoms, music videos, and movies. The scrunchy was ubiquitous. Of course, the term scrunchy was quickly replaced in the teenage vernacular by the much more active and democratic-sounding scrunchy. Now, this is a typically American rags-to-riches story that contains all the elements of a Julia Roberts star vehicle. We have a down-on-her-luck heroine who, through determination and perseverance, triumphs over adversity. The one problem with this uplifting narrative is that the man Ronnie Repson divorced was John Repson, chairman of Revlon, a mass market brand of cosmetics and skin care. While this in itself doesn't diminish the importance of the invention, it does mean that Rami had the wealth and the connections to properly launch the Squinchy brand. Squinchy, with the vaguely Swiss sounding name, survives to this day as a subsidiary of the Conair Corporation, a manufacturer of hair dryers and other personal grooming devices. Now, while sales of the scrunchie are not as robust as they used to be, Rami Revson is obviously a very wealthy woman. She now lives in Wellington, Florida. <laughs> a wealthy enclave in Palm Beach County that is a top polo destination, as well as host to both the Winter Equestrian Festival and 
the National Horse Show, the largest horse show in the world. Here is an aerial view of a residence. <laughs> Notable na neighbors include, um, let's see, Tommy Lee Jones, Tommy Lee Jones, uh, Vanilla Ice, Michael Bloomberg, and Madonna. <laughs> 